Hey friends, I am folding newspaper, flyer, paper, whatever. And I think I'm going to roll some paper, make some tubes for something. And I don't know, I'm just going to, I've got a bunch of paper rolled. I'm going to cut the strips or tear the strips and roll some tubes. And I think I'm going to make some charms out of them for the fun of it because I have been with my foot up and I'm sitting on the floor so I can craft with my foot up without because I can't sit the table my craft table and craft with my foot down because I get aching pains through my foot I hope you guys can hear me anyway so I've been folding these papers like this so then I can um, tear some strips and then roll them with my stick and then glue them together with my glue stick so my stick so, um, I, um, that's what I'm doing. So I'm just folding up paper like this. And just kind of accordion it, uh, doing the accordion type of big fold. So then I can tear them. I should be able to tear them rather than cut them. Kind of cut a little job out there. And then roll them from the corner to make some tube, paper tubes. And there's lots of things you can make with paper tubes, but I like making charms with paper tubes. And at the moment, I don't have any that I can show you. I think they're stored away, but I'm only got maybe one or two left. So I'm going to make some chunky charms with rolled paper. So that's what I'm doing. So I will be back. Now I'm up to the next part of my video. Now I know I usually have my tri my video camera up, but I'm not with my tripod. And I didn't want you guys like, I don't know. It's just easier to do it this way, I guess, today. So bear with me that the video is quite different than what you're usually used to. So sorry, guys. And yeah, I'm not like I'm trying to make it an appropriate view. <laughs> mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to roll these papers. So I'm just going to actually grab another paper bunch here. I have all these couple of flyers here that I have. And so I'm just going to... So I cut these papers and that'd be close enough. Got my glue stick. I got my stick. And I'm gonna make the tubes. And I think you guys know like from watching Shannon Green how to make these tubes. She's pretty been too crazy. Tubular. So gotta kind of do more of an angle that you go this way. I know this is odd. Um, the more longer your tube will be. So if you go more across, your tubes are going to be a bit shorter. So that's just the kind of rule of thumb. I haven't actually oh, move my paper. Over. I actually haven't rolled one in like ages. So let's see how this goes. So basically, that's it. So this end is going to be the smaller end of your tube, and the other end here is going to be the larger end of your tube. Let's see how this works. It's been a while, guys. And then we're going to stick some glue. Steak. Love saying the word steak. And then make some tubes, paper tubes, just like that. And I'm just going to glue the corner together. And there we go. So I could probably make it, if I make it a little higher up, a little tighter one than this. Let's see. I'll just keep this from uh, gluing. So I just cut these up. So if I'm just going to like roll it, say, probably up my, down my stick a little bit more. Just like these. Probably, it probably works better. I don't know. We'll see. It's been a while since I rolled them. Yeah, it makes a bit of a tighter end, a lot tighter end actually. So just roll a couple, see which way you like it. So if you go more further towards your hand on the end of the stick, oh, which direction? Then you're going to get a much tighter end comparison to this one. But you're still going to have one end a little tighter than the other, I think. So. 
to be if you need to attach them. I'm sure it'll be good. And that's about it. Rolling some tube, paper tubes. <laughs> oh, a little help from the puppies. A little help from the puppies. Right? Are you a puppy? You're a puppy, Nora. <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to do is I am going to, I'm probably going to attach some of these together, and I'm using my decoupage mat medium. I think it'd be easier than using my glue stick and I'm just going to stick the thin side into the long side like this and get them stuck in there so what I'm going to do add some of that on here get them stuck in and then I'm going to flatten out my pieces because I'm not sure how many I'm going to do but I'm just going to do a few ah, together. I'll do four just for the heck of it. Sounds like a good number to stick together. It's nice and long. If you hear squeaking, that's Kira with the hiccups. <laughs> there you go. She sounds like a chihuahua <laughs> yiping. So I got four together. And then I'm going to flatten it out. And then I'm going to show you what I do next to make a particular um, charm. So I'm just going to close my lid so I don't have a puppy spilling it. So now I have my piece here that's all nice and long. And I'm just going to flatten it out. And just like that. I'm not going to pull too much but where it's glued because I don't want to pull it out. Hold it. I got lots of um, newspaper on my fingers, but guess what? It's free, so it's the you know flyers that are uh, that are delivered to the door. Flyers and news, town news. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to. These are four pieces. I'm going to start rolling them up just this way. I'm just going to make sure this is kind of flat here. Just get the good roll going. You could use a toothpick as well for this. I have a good big piece and it's kind of nice to get going. I'm just going to, I think my puppy's kind of chillaxing right here. Chillaxing. So I'm going to go as, as thick as I think I need to go and then start rolling it by hand. And then it's going to make a little roll like this.
Oops. It's okay. Just lay down. She misses me because I, she hasn't been sleeping with me since I hurt my leg. Because I don't think I could take her upstairs with crutches to the potty, so we have to, I put her upstairs in the kennel, or I get the kids to put her upstairs in the kennel. So anyways, I'm rolling this, wrapping it. I'm being really crazy about it right now. It's kind of, other oh, dogs are growling. So I don't know if you guys can see this. This is terrible. It's terrible. It's terrible. Okay, hopefully you guys are looking at this, not just cuteness over here. Uh, and I know this is very unprofessional of me to have it upstairs. So this is four together. And I'm have I am actually struggling a little bit, but I think it's just being out of practice. I haven't done it in a long time. So this is actually a really big one. Four is a really big one. I should have done three. So now I'm going to stick it down on a piece of paper. Get some glue out. Get my glue out. get the ends really I want to stick it I want to struggle with it so I'm just gonna do a good big strip and that's what I'm gonna do and let that stick just like that so now I have this one's a huge gonna be a huge charm but uh, Larger than I normally do, but you can do them smaller. I'm just gonna let this dry for okay, a couple minutes. So I put the video down a bit. Okay, so this is the larger one. I had four pieces. This is the one I made with two pieces, just to make it. I just did it without without you guys, just because I wanted to uh, have it. The size difference variations not that big of a difference but this is what I like to do now so this one's been drying longer than this one so what I do like to do for my charms is I like to shape them so I'm gonna shape this one a teardrop shape you can make squares um, and maybe I'll make that one into square to show you I do have finished jewelry too. I could show you but then I'd have to spend, send someone downstairs to go get it, and they'd be like, where is it, Mom? You know how that happens. So then I'm doing this kind of a shape, and I just use whatever means to get what I want. So I'm just going to push down. Um, Can you guys see that? Nope, probably not. I'm going to push down using, you know, the table, the floor in this case, but, you know, your tabletop, and just kind of shape it. Puppy and get the teardrop shape. This is one style I like to do. You can use pliers to push the um, top, give it some shape. And there's a nice shape. You can do Or maybe squish it more. I'm really squishing, putting pressure on it here. And kind of just play with it. And that's what I do. I'm just kind of doing that. Now I'm going to do a little coat of my, our um, decoupage, decoupage on there to kind of hold it together a bit. So it doesn't come undone because you can push the centers out um, as you've seen in some other people's videos. But to make a charm, you're going to want to put this on.
so that I will let that dry a bit and then you can shape it. I got the side still not glued so I can kind of still put pressure on it. You know, am I pushing on here? No, I don't know what I'm doing because I'm kind of working on my computer now and I've got paper over the mouse so I don't know what I'm doing. Try and get that teardrop shape and I think I'm going to push down a little bit more and get a, kind of a, a chunky tear maybe so you kind of can just shape it the way you want you could kind of shape it where it curls and looks like like a little um, Indian design or whatever let's see if we can make that just for the fun of it where's my steak you could just shape it if you played with it long enough you could do that I don't know if you guys can see what I'm doing because I moved the camera down a bit so you guys had a better view of this stuff here, but I don't know what I'm doing. Okay. Now this one I'm going to try to shape it more as a square. So what I do is I push on my hard surface and I'm trying to make it it's more square. So you can actually make it quite square. Just keep pushing down. rectangular here's a more of a square shape add the Mod Podge on there then I'm going to come back with a little bit of um, paper napkin and show you guys how I kind of finish off my charm a little bit cover it up I have some paper towel or paper napkin pieces here and this is how I cover and which I was trying to get in here. This is how I cover these particular pieces. Now I want to share, I got Kendra to go grab it. This is one that I made in squares and this is actually just one roll and I made it into a bracelet um, and I hand made the ends and they go into each other and this is one roll square and this one I didn't put paper up napkin on I did paint it in gold just to show you and inked it up to make it tarnished looking so this one's I actually got to repair it because I got snagged on something and I pulled it out but I did um, glue it in and I made even a little latch for it and everything but that is my hand bracelet like made bracelet that I made myself with these so just to get oops thanks puppy just to get going here it's kind of an awkward video I'm so sorry guys so here's the larger one and I was gonna put more decoupage on it and stick a nice piece that I like of my paper napkin on it you can tear up pieces of paper napkin you could choose what you really really like on your paper napkin and so it's whatever you like so I'm just going to grab this little butterfly here and then I can move little pieces and tear them from to fill in my edges or whatever I can wrap it more around and it's easy to tear but I don't want to tear it the wrong way so just pull it away like this and then it's already on there then you just choose one for the other side after this is a little bit dry so I'm going to put this one to the side and this one I'm choosing to do this kind of Asian style of the kind of like the fish wave type of thing here. I like this. Just like that. Make sure you got glue on the inside to keep it on. 
I'm going to flip this one over and I'm going to put a little glue on the edge on this one and then kind of wrap it around a bit. Just like that. And pull it. Because so you got so much play with paper napkins that I could do that. Just putting more glue on, folding it up, and just pulling. I don't know if you guys are seeing what I'm doing. Just to get the sides on this one, because I, it's not going to be too easy to get, keep the, the lines straight. Although I don't didn't get all of them, but there you go, some of them. Some of them. Let that dry for a few minutes. These are a couple of real. Here's my other one drying here. Uh, I don't have my heat tool up here, <laughs> so these are the ones drying here. And I got a couple small ones. And this one I shaped in the square it was just one. So one shape. This one is probably um, thinner paper, magazine paper. So that's why uh, it's probably so thin. I did probably a couple, but there's to show you. So what I did is just, you know, you just hold it, be patient, make it the shape that you want. Then I'm going to add some matte decoupage on there and you can let it dry just to hold it. Um, this one is like an oval shape, kind of eye shape, diamond shape. I'm going to throw on this nice black napkin on here with the polka dots. And I know hopefully this video is not dragging too long. It's just a little different not having my heat tool up here. And I didn't think about that when I was asking the girls for all this stuff. So I'm going to try to do it without. So now I have the sides I want to do. If I have a small enough piece, I should be able to wrap it around. Depending on what the design is, you can get away with it if you have the right design for it. So I have a decent design for this one to do that with because it's just the polka dots. Getting more glue on my fingers. I had to wash my fingers. I got someone to grab me a cloth. I'm going to let that one dry and it'll take the shape still of the groove just like this one took the shape of the grooves and then I wanted to put um, a little flower on this side So I get away with it. I had it short enough where I could kind of wrap it around and it's a good enough cloth where it's not too much design where it makes it all crazy like so I could just kind of and that makes a nice paper charm and I'll still show you how to make the fixings for the charm part. I'm just going to let that dry for a while. So what I usually do is I make, I have a 20 gauge wire here. I don't know if that's too big or not. I make a little loop in the end and I make a piece that goes through. It can go through the whole thing. It could go through part of it. It's up to you. You can use E6000 to glue it. So what I do is I will wrap my piece like so all the way down to make I don't know if you guys can see that. Turn my piece, wrap it around a couple of times, and make my eye piece like that. And I'm going to one on both sides here just because I'm trying to, I'll just cut that in half and I will E6000 that into the smaller charms just like that. 
So I'm going to make a hole into the smaller charms to do that. You can go right through the charms. It's going to be a little bit of work to make the holes through. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that with these ones here. I'm just going to try it. If I can wrap it around. And I don't know if you guys can see what you guys can see of this. just don't know. Because, um, now I have my sewing kit and usually I have pliers to use to put like a big needle through like this. Like this is a large needle. And my back's going to really hurt now. But what I'll do is it's still wet, so I'll decide where do I want to put a hole through here. And I can do it at an angle if I want the charm to hang this way. Let's say I do. I'm just going to carefully, and that's what I do. I have done it by hand all the time. And I just twist my needle in there. You can use a thumbtack or anything like that too. Might be a little bit easier. Let's see if the other one is any thicker than I have. Or stronger feeling. And then I could just that's what I do. I play with it like that. So then I see how far I got to go with my thing. And I kind of just dig around in there and do that. And then I E6000 the piece in. I usually have a pair of pliers that I can actually work with. And I'm just going to maybe use these. They're not the right pliers, but I don't want to nag the children again run downstairs and just do it a little bit by a little bit pushing and that's what I do if you guys can think you know find a better way I just like to do it that way don't know it's just the way I've done it and now it's all the way in where I can put my charm in just like that and then I can E6000 my charm in, and then it won't come out. I used a crazy glue, I think, on this one. I, didn't, I haven't discovered E6000 when I was making these, um, so it got caught on something. But E6000's been pretty good to me, so I think it'll work. That's one charm. And then I can do another one. I'll work on this one here. I want to share with you guys that you can get, if you do it before it gets really dry, you can put the needle right through with patience. And of course, because I have no way of walking around the house and doing anything else, I may as well sit here and do that. Actually, it didn't take too long. But I just took the flat edge here of this, where there's not the, can you see where it's flat there? There's no cutting piece there. And I just slowly back and forth like this, twist it, getting in there. So you can actually make a hole right through and then um, get your uh, wire going right through and then doing a couple charms. So that's just a, a neat way to make charms for absolutely free, really. I mean, these napkins I did get from Happy Mail. Um, I did have to pay for the, you know, the glue. You get the glue. But, I mean, that's okay, right? That's, how bad is that? It's not bad at all. So I'm just putting it right through because you know how the needle, AI needle is usually thicker. So just for this one, because I'm putting it. Okay, so I finally got the, I got the wire in to have the wire fairly straight and then I'm gonna make that one's my charm wire so 
so you can hang it whatever way you want. And you can add whatever beads or anything like that that you want to that one. So that one I'll just leave that way. So this one I got through the top. I kind of made that little curl I wanted to. And I'm just going to slowly pull it through and do the same thing. Where I'm going to have the wire. I wonder if I can use this one. So I tried to do this one. I put the loop through. And then I'm trying to loop it. I'm thinking I can make it go and twist. I'm hoping. It'll be something to play with. This is a little bit of a new one for me, how I made this one. But I've done it a little bit different before. But there you go, another charm type thing. Not sure if I like that style, but I was playing with it. As well, I should have put it up through a little, made this a little shorter. But you get the gist of it. So that is the different charms you can make with these. Now usually I do uh, paint them and all that kind of stuff, but I haven't um, even brought the paint upstairs today. So this one... I'm just going to do the same thing where I'm making a hole right in the top. Going back and forth. Go a little shorter. Go back and forth. Put some pressure. I make sure I keep going straight. Don't want to get my fingers. And that's what I do. And that could be a crazy way to do it. Maybe. I don't know. But. And this one's the one I'm going to stick here with some E6. And I think I have to make that wiggle that hole a bit bigger. Wiggle that hole a bit bigger to get that 12 gauge in or 20 gauge in there wire. And that's the way I came up with the first batch anyway to do like little, I got glue everywhere, do little uh, chunky cute paper charms, wrap paper charms. So that's that one. And it's not glued at the moment with the E6000 so it'll be able to come out easy but in this one I got to do some kind of charm or something on there, some beads and do a little wrap or something but that's how you do it then I would put lots of gold and lots of um, this one I think I put uh, jewelry uh, Aileen's jewelry pendant gel on it so I made it really shiny and after the gold and of course gold's got that nice shine to it too and I added some um, archival ink just to kind of darken it up and make it look aged a bit that's how I did these and of course I just did hand wired some craft wire or something like that just handed it all the little pieces the same way as what I did with these bigger ones. Just I don't know if these ones turn out a little better. I guess I was playing with them quite a bit at the time and was got out of the practice of doing them, I guess. But that's him. And actually, I think some of these ones were the straight pins that have the heads on one side, and I was actually putting them through. That's what it was. And then I just made the jump rings with the leftover pieces when I'm cutting the straight pins. And wrapped a couple of those up. The straight pins with the heads on them, that's why they're so perfect. And then I made this little latch here. But anyways, that's the gist of it. You can make charms, you can make beads, and all that kind of things out of rolled paper. And I use um, paper napkins and... You can just paint them whatever you want, and they're kind of unique and unique. And I did do some other charms that I don't know where they are, and I did do some where I gave them away, and I had tons of charms hanging from them in different directions, and all pretty much homemade beads and charms.
So there you go, guys. I hope you like this. Don't forget to craft like a duck. Talk to you guys later. Bye-bye. Actually, I was just thinking that I'll show some pictures. I'm sure I have some pictures of the charms I've had, um, older ones. I'll show some pictures of those ending results and those um, at the end of this video. Bye, guys.